It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Welcome to Power Back 175. Today we're talking about breaking the habit loop. You know that thing where you're like, I know what I want to do, what I need to do, what I'm ready to do. I can see it, feel it. Hell, maybe I can even taste it. But then I get sidetracked or I sit on the couch or I scroll through my phone. And before I know it, I keep doing the same things over and over again. And I can't seem to break the pattern. Good news is you're not alone. And second good news is there is a way to break this pattern. It's called breaking the habit loop. And it's what we're going to dig into on today's Power Back episode. Before we dig into the details of this, though, I also want to let you know that this is a huge part of what we dig into during the Mindfuckery Workshop. The next one is September 11th through the 15th. It's an hour a day, every day for five days, amongst other like-minded women in business or women that are craving more in their life. You know, that itch, that calling, that like, I'm ready for more, but I can't quite seem to get out of my own way. Or I continue the patterns and it's it's stopping me. And quite frankly, I'm fucking done with that. If any or all of that feels like you, the Mindfuckery Workshop quite literally can be life-changing. And we'll go further into what we're talking about today in this Power Back episode, which is breaking the habit loop. So... If you listen through this and you're like, fuck yes, I'm ready. I need some support. I need some guidance. I need some tools. Go to lauraora.com. At the top of the website, there is a mind fuckery tab. You can click on that, register, and I'll see you in class really soon. All right, let's dig into breaking the habit loop. First, let's give it some context, though, some some groundedness underneath of us. The, the habit loop is nothing more than a cycle that repeats old beliefs, habits, and things that don't allow you to move forward or to make a change. Now, I want to preface, though, that the habit loop can be positive as well. You can create new, healthier habit loops that replace old ones. So the habit loop is not innately negative. We just tend to focus a little bit more on the negative ones because they they take up more energy. They take up more time. And honestly, it's what causes a lot of blocks um, and a lot of frustration in life and business. Now, the mind is really funny because to break a habit, we must replace it with a new one. So we've got all these really cool neurons that fire in our brain. And you may have heard the phrase that neurons that fire together wire together. Well, this is basically the baseline of where our habits, thoughts, and patterns are created. Because after we do something for so long, we've essentially trained our brain to continue to do that. Our subconscious mind gets programmed. It knows what to do. It knows how to handle things. Even if it's a negative situation or a challenging situation, your brain has been wired to know how to handle it and process it. And to create a new healthier habit, a new habit loop, we must break the old one and replace it with this new one. And this happens by getting conscious, choosing to respond versus react, and to do something differently. So you're basically going against the grain here. But with enough repetition over time, you start to form new connectors, new neurons that are firing and wiring together, and then you replace the old habit loop with a new one. I find it really, really insanely helpful to know a little bit of the science, like enough to know enough. We're not breaking in, like we're not breaking open science books here, but it's enough to know like, hey, there's nothing wrong with you, right? Like it's so easy to want to immediately go to, well, I'm so stupid or I keep doing this and I don't understand. And the understanding is understanding how your brain works, the mechanics of it. And knowing that some of that is out of your control because it's in the subconscious mind now. But I'm telling you today, and so many others can and will tell you, that you have the ability to change this. You possess the power to literally shift your mind, the way that things are wired together, and therefore changing the outcome and your circumstances. So if you ever get caught in this cycle where like, you know that there's something that you need to do, you know that there's something that you want to do for yourself, you know that you want to change your diet so that you feel better. 
you know that you want to say no more often so that you have more time. You have been saying for how many years that you want to start meditating daily, but you do it once or twice and then six months go by. You know that you're wanting to simplify something in your business or raise your prices or shift something around that's been causing a lot of tension in your life, but you just can't quite seem to get there. Or you do it once or twice and it kind of, it's like a fart in the wind. It's just kind of here and gone. The reason that you're not yet breaking this habit is because you've not yet changed the pattern. And the other thing that I want to emphasize on here is this takes time, right? Like changing your diet, changing something about your business, changing something about your daily routine. You don't just do it once and then it's magically fixed. Because another fun fact about the mind is that it doesn't know the difference between past, present, and future. Your mind and your body are directly connected, yes, by anatomy, but also by energy, by neurons, by all kinds of connectors. And your brain's duty is to think and to keep you safe. So when you think about changing something, let's go with something as simple as changing your diet, right? That's something that many of us can relate to. There is a comfort in the way that you are currently eating. There is a comfort in the way that you are currently maybe not exercising. Look, sitting on my couch is way comfier than hopping on the Peloton and sweating my face off. So your brain wants you to be happy and comfortable. And in this particular situation, sitting on the couch and having dinner and not moving my body is comfortable. It makes me happy. Now, here's where the real horseshit starts to come into play, because as I'm sitting there, and I'm just using this as an example, again, because this is something we can relate to and something I have experienced. I still experience this. The shit thing that starts to happen then is that our minds want to start to play stories. It wants to tell us things. It wants to banter us. It wants to fight you like hell. Now, again, this is more subconscious programming based off of thoughts, feelings, expectations, the shoulds, societal standards, that one thing that your mom said one time in fourth grade, like all that shit gets stored in your brain. And even though your brain wants to keep you safe, it also knows all of this other information as well. So I'm there and I'm comfortable and I'm sitting and then the voice pops up. Laura, you should be getting up. Look here, you're just sitting around again. Oh, you want to get healthier. You want to feel better, but you're not willing to get up. You should probably go outside, but that doesn't feel very good. Or it's raining today or it's too hot. Look at me. Here I go again. I wanted something and I just can't do it. And it's never going to happen because it's too fucking hard. Does any or all of that sound familiar? Those are not your voices, by the way. That is all the external crap that your brain has absorbed and packed away in a nice little suitcase. And it carries around with you all the time. Maybe at one point someone told you that you were lazy or that you were worthless or that you'll never amount to something. So if you're like me and you're sitting there on that couch and these voices start to play over, guess what you're probably going to hear? You're lazy. You're not worth anything. You're never going to amount to anything. Your body doesn't know the difference. Your mind has said, hey, we've heard this before and I have an associated feeling with that. Now I feel bad. Now I feel sad. Now I feel depressed. Now I feel bad about myself. And that in turn sets off a series of thoughts, feelings, and reactions. So now when my husband walks in to ask me something very generously with love and support, and I snap back at him, that's a reaction for all of the silent things that are happening in my head. Because thoughts create feeling. Like you can literally put yourself into a stressful reaction by thoughts alone in the same way that you can put yourself into joy and happiness and contentment by thought alone. So the thoughts create a feeling. Now we're in the loop. Okay. This is the habit loop. The thought has created the feeling. The feeling then creates your behavior, what you do or don't do. And that behavior creates a habit. And so if every day I'm going through this habit of, I want to feel better, I want to eat better, I want to work out more, I'm not going to do that thing. I'm going to sit on the couch, I'm going to eat this shitty food. 
by doing that over and over and over again, I have created an unintentional habit loop. I have told my brain what I actually want to do. And to get out of that cycle, to actually have the thing that I want, I must temporarily go against my brain and redirect it. Your brain wants to be told what to do. And your brain is forever listening, which is kind of funny because it's also doing the talking, but it's also doing the listening at the same time. So when you are telling it that you want to do one thing, but its association is with something different, there is going to be tension. There is going to be a fork in the road. There is going to be pushback. There is going to be resistance because your brain is like, but I already know what to do. So why are you telling me something new? Meanwhile, your body's like, bitch, we, we know, we know what to do. We know what we're ready for. Your conscious mind then kicks in and is like, listen, we know what we're ready for. We know what to do. So why are you fighting? And then you get frustrated and you shut down and it's a whole ass thing, right? This is where the change gets to happen because the shift may be temporarily discomforting it may be temporarily hard. It may be temporarily like, oh, like this just doesn't feel good. But with enough repetition, you start to form new habit loops. And when you create new habit loops, then you are giving it new direction. So let me give you a visual example of this. Think about a dirt road. You know, the one that's been there for 500 fucking years. Horse and buggies used to go down it. Cars go down it. There are these enormous grooves in this dirt road, right? There's just like a big hump in the center and the two grooves where the tire tracks go. And when you turn your car down this road, your car just kind of immediately clicks into place. Start to think about this the way that your brain works. This is the way that your brain works. So every time you go to try something new or to challenge this road, right? You're driving down this road and you tried like hell to turn the wheel, to get out of the groove, to go on a new path. At first, it's hard, right? There's resistance. It's like you really got to put your back into it. You really got to think about it. You got both hands on the steering wheel. You're like, I'm going to do this. You got to hit on the, on the gas a little bit more than normal. Like it's, it's a full body experience. But eventually... After doing this enough times, each day, once a day, twice a day, 10 times a day, you turn your wheel a little bit to the left. And while at first it's challenging, each day it starts to get a little bit easier, doesn't it? Eventually over time, you have worn down that hump in the center and you have started to create two new tire tracks. Could you still go down the straight one that was there first? Absolutely. But now there is a new pathway a new direction that is easier, that doesn't take as much effort. It doesn't take as much thought. In fact, maybe you don't even think about the old way anymore. You're just going the new way because you have created a new path. This is what's happening in your brain when you're creating a new habit loop. When you are breaking an old pattern, it's a full body fucking experience. You're thinking about it all the time. It's harder. It feels like an uphill climb. And some days you want to say, fuck that shit. I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. But when your conscious mind is involved in the decision, when you're saying, no, I really, I am ready to feel better. I am ready to raise my prices. I am ready to make a shift in my career. I am ready to get out of my own way and launch the damn business. Like whatever it is, that thing that you have been wanting to do, when you consciously associate with, I am ready, I am choosing this, and I'm choosing to do something different each day. That is your body's way of starting to create a new path. And when you back that belief, when you back that decision up with action that supports what you want instead of the shit that you don't, let me say that again. When you take action that supports the thing that you want instead of the shit that you don't, that's where you start to create change. That's where you start to see the difference. That's where you start to get the fulfillment, the enjoyment, the abundance, the success, the whatever goal it is that you're looking for, the health, the wellness, the relationship with each conscious decision to put your whole ass body into making a subtle shift. And that's the thing, like you don't have to flip the whole table over today, right? Like it's not about 
moving across the country and changing your name and cutting off all your hair. But if that's what you want to do, then do that. But more often than not, it's in the subtle, tiny shifts every day. So let me give you an example with my couch scenario to bring this full circle. I know this about myself. I know that the Peloton helps me. I know that taking a walk helps me. So one subtle shift that I love to do every day that's very simple but treats my brain to this whole new way is to come home and instead of putting on my pajamas first, which is what I really want to do, I put on my workout clothes. And then when I'm making dinner or picking up around the house or doing just home things, running errands, I'm already geared up. I'm one step closer to working out and moving my body. So I've already eliminated the, the easy way, which would be pajamas, which then leads to doing things, which leads to couch. I've already told my brain, hey, I would like to work out today. The next one step is then putting on my shoes, right? Either the workout shoes or the clip-on shoes. And then it's this, it's this moment of gutsy, this moment of decision where you simply decide. Mel Robbins has this five second rule where it's like five, four, three, two, one, countdown. You literally have five seconds to alter what your brain is going to do or not do. And so by leaning in and saying, okay, it's time to do it. I'm going to decide and then go. So in my case, it is walking outside. It is walking down the stairs into the Peloton room. It is just like, it's like getting real ballsy with yourself and saying, nope, this is what we're doing. I'm choosing differently today. This is the whole body part. This is the part where you're yanking the fucking wheel. And by doing this each and every day on a regular basis, you start to train your brain of what it is that you actually want. It tells your brain what is new and safe and familiar to you. It tells your brain what makes you happy, what brings you joy, and what helps you feel better. And by doing this enough times, you've broken the old habit loop and you've replaced it with a new one that better supports who you are. I just think it's so incredibly fascinating that we have so much power that we don't even realize it. It's not talked about a lot in this type of setting. And it's it's so approachable, yet also seems so far-fetched. So I love taking these thoughts, feelings, and ideas and breaking it down into tangible ways that you can do something. So today, I challenge you to recognize what is one habit loop that you feel stuck in. This could be in career, finances, relationships, your business, clients, something going on in your life. Where do you feel stuck in a loop? Feel into what that has done for you in the past. How has that helped you to be safe, to feel safe, to get through a situation, to really hunker down? How has that served you in the past? And then lean into releasing that that's no longer needed that that kept me safe and gave me something in a moment, but it doesn't have to stay this way. What is it that you truly want now? And what are some things that you could consider doing differently? This isn't an invitation to create a whole ass plan or figure out every how or who or what. What is one next thing that you can do? What is your version of putting on the workout pants? What is your version of putting on the shoes and going outside. And now that you know that, I challenge you to do that today. And then again tomorrow. And again the next day. What if you started to make this tiny change every single day and it started to get easier? That this became more of a natural routine? That the intensity of it lessens and becomes more familiar and enjoyable? And most of all, What if you actually start getting that thing that you actually want? You are powerful beyond words, my friend, and you hold the ability to make all the change that you desire in your life. If this process is ringing true to you and you're like, I'm ready to make this shift and you love to be around like-minded women, I'm telling you the Mindfuckery Workshop can be a catalyst to the positive change in your life and business. 
class runs September 11th through the 15th, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can grab your seat at lauraora.com. If you're loving the show and this is helpful for you, I invite you to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other women like you find the show and learn how their life and their business can shift as well. You can also connect with me on social. I'm on all the platforms using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.